I really hope that you're not tired of hearing about Luminar Neo because today I'm going to show you how to edit a portrait style photo using Relight AI and portrait features within Luminar Neo. The very first thing you should do is decide on your composition. Now mine here in particular, I quite like the composition here. There is a bit of headroom at the top, so I'm just going to prop it down a little bit here. Okay, and then you press enter. Next, I would always do cleanup here. So whether it's removing blemishes or people in the background here or little spots that I want to clean up. And typically I would go into the clone tool. All oh, right, there's no clone tool. Sorry, people. However, there is still the eraser tool and it works fairly well. So we're going to zoom in here, see if we can use the erase tool to clean this up. I would use a clone and stamp tool for this. But the eraser tool could work somewhat. There you go. But you see it's sampling a bit of the shirt there. And uh, we might as well get rid of the person here. Click erase. I'm not sure how Neil's going to handle this guy. So we're going to give it a go. This is why I don't like using the eraser tool for that. Oh, that's not too bad. So we can just clean up this area. Click erase. And there you go. Of course, this isn't too clean, but you know, from a distance, you can't really see that. That's really being a pixel peeper. So now we're going to go to this side. And as you see, there's a couple people. I'm being really picky here, but uh, I'm just demonstrating to you guys how to use the eraser tool. You don't want to go past where there's a change of color or texture. Not a very clean job, but from a distance, you can't really tell. So we're I'm just going to go ahead and clean up a few more parts here. As mentioned, next I'm going to clean up some of the blemishes here. Now, one thing you can do is go into the portrait area and under skin AI, there's something called skin defects removal. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and I'm going to zoom in to uh, Josh's face here. And as I check this box here, you're going to see that it does remove some of it. So let me do a before and after. But it doesn't take care of everything and it doesn't do a great job of it. See how it kind of just blurs it out. To me, it's not usable. And, you know, when you smooth in the skin or if I had a clone and stamp tool, <laughs> I can fix that up. But uh, I don't really use this because it's, it's not that good. So in this case, we can still use the erase tool. And just like before, you don't want to use a huge brush. You just want enough to delete the area. Yeah, there we go. So we see all the selections and I'm going to click on erase. This does a much better job than what we looked at before in the portrait area. Now I could probably do a few more here. Let's do a quick before and after. And now the next thing we're going to do is going to the develop tab and the highlights, as you see here, are very blown out. As I did in the previous video, we're going to bring it all the way down, especially in the building here. You see that the details, they're still there. So I'm going to leave it maybe about halfway. I don't mind it being a little blown out like that because it's the midday sun. So we're going to leave it at that. Next, what I like to do is go into the Accent AI slider. I'll always crank this up just to see the maximum impact of the photo. The skies look fairly blue, which I quite like. And you'll see in the face that the exposure is starting to even out. So again, if I bring this down, see as I bring it all the way up, there's a bit more light coming to his face and enhancing the blue in the sky back there. Now I could do a sky enhancer too to really over exaggerate that, but I think this looks more natural and uh, I don't want to replace the sky for this particular photo, but you could, you could do that. So let's do another quick before and after you see this flat raw file exposure in the background is a bit high and now it's a bit more balanced and now we're going to go into relight ai basically brightness near 
it'll light up everything in the foreground. And you're going to notice if I play with the depth, I'm going to bring this down. See the shadows at the bottom? As I bring it to the right, it's going to go further back. So I can even recover the shadow detail here quite a bit. This is way too bright. So what I like to do is start from 100 and then go down to see where it looks most natural. In terms of brightness far, if you bring it to the left, it's going to darken things in the background. In this case, it's the sky. There you go. And if I were to play with the depth, we could even bring it closer to the foreground. But at this point, as I said, it's midday and uh, I still want it to look like midday. So again, a quick before and after. Really looks like a different photo now, doesn't it? Now we're going to focus more on the face and we're going to zoom back in here. And this is where I go into the portrait section and start with face AI. Now, should I want the face light? If I, again, I'm going to bring this all the way up and you're going to see the face brighten up. There you go. If I back up here, you see the face is way, way too bright. I could bring it down maybe to about here just to give it just a bit more light, a bit more focus on the face. I'm not going to use the slim face feature here, but basically if you slide it up, you're going to see his face get more slim, but it's not like he's got a wide face or anything. So we're just going to keep it at zero. But if you see here a before and after, it really just brings in his face a bit more. It actually looks pretty good, but I don't want to do that. Now the eyes feature is one of my favorite features within Luminar Neo and AI. As we look at the photo, you see, as I zoom in here, you can see a bit of catch light coming through on the top here. So I'm not going to use the iris flare necessarily, but what I like to do here is use the eye enhancer. And as you see, if I bring it to, let's say about 60%, kind of has that nice glassy, glossy look in their eyes. So if I back this off a bit and do a before and after, you see how the eyes really pop out, eh? And it's to a point where it's not too excessive, where if it's so sharp, then it looks like dude is just staring at you like, like a creep, you know, <laughs> you don't want that either. Now I could use dark circles here. You see there's a bit of dark circles happening here. And again, I like to always crank it to see how much of it comes off and then back it off. So if I bring this down, yeah, you see it coming back here a bit. So if I crank that up, it's not as noticeable. It's very, very subtle. So again, let's do a before and after. There you go. So it helps to brighten out the um, eye bag area here. Next, we're going to go into the mouth area here and I'm just going to make his lips a bit more saturated and just a tad of redness. Now I don't want it too much where, where he looks like a girl, right? So we're just going to bring it up just a little bit and he's not showing any teeth so we're not going to use that just below you're going to see skin ai there's a couple of ways to smooth in skin now the skin ai does a very decent job again i'm going to crank this here and you're going to see it looks way too smooth like it's a bad photoshop job right so i'm going to bring it down to let's say 50 and see how that looks see that's a bit more acceptable i i do still like to see some of the texture you can also combine this with structure ai just to give it a bit more smoothness again if i over exaggerate this it looks like before right but now you lose all the texture but you have very smooth skin like a baby's butt <laughs> but i i don't want his face to look like a baby's butt so <laughs> we're gonna bring this up just a little bit more so you don't have to do this step and actually when i look at it now it still looks over processed that's not the look I'm going for. So I'm actually not going to use it this time, but just know that that option is there. If you really want that smooth, silky skin again, just don't overdo it. Other than those changes for the face and the skin, everything else I I'm okay with. 
So final touches, usually I leave for contrast or color, and I'm actually pretty happy with the contrast of this photo. But just for the sake of the video, I do want to show you a little tip about using super contrast. And this can really help you control those highlights in shadows as well in a different way. And let me show you what I mean. So first I'm going to bring the highlights contrast all the way to the middle here at 48. And you see that difference already? Let me do a before and after. So what's happening here is the, the highlights contrast is bringing those highlights down. So when I do this, if you're going to notice now when I go to highlights balance, if I bring it to the left, you're going to see those highlights really pop. If I bring it to the right, it's going to bring those highlights down. So this is another way you could recover highlights, right? For me, it's a little much, so I'm just going to bring it back a little bit. There you go, to minus 18. So if I do a before and after, you see it just gives a bit more color to the skin. And this is why I do super contrast first. So we're going to do the same thing with the midtones and watch the image as I enable this. Again, let's do before and after. So now you start to see the colors really come to life. So again, I'm going to bring it down to brighten it. That's too much. And then I'm just going to leave it at, let's say, I'm going to bring this up actually to maybe seven. Let's do before and after. And of course we have the shadow contrast last. So if I bring this to the middle and then bring the balance uh, left, it's actually going to lighten up the shadows. If I bring it right, it's going to deepen those uh, blacks and shadows there. So once again, let's do a before and after. We see this flat raw photo to this contrasty, colorful uh, image here. This may be too much for you and you might want to, you know, decrease the saturation or whatever the case may be. Like if we go into color and you just want to back it off a little bit, you can do that. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it. And let's say I wanted to give more of a warmer temperature. This is where I would increase the temperature of the picture just slightly and maybe I wanted more of the reds to come out and uh, change the tint there. Yeah and that looks more natural. So the other option too is to go into color into HSL and tweak the colors here. I'm going to save that for another video because we've already covered a lot but for the most part this is kind of my usual workflow when I edit these types of photos. One more time let's look at the final edit compared to the raw file that we started with. Obviously it looks like a totally different picture. So until the next video get out there hit record create and I'll see you when I see you.